Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 10 March 2016, Thursday night. It is debate night in Miami, Florida for the Republicans. And I watched, oh gosh, the first hour of it or so, and they were being so nice. I got bored, so I had to come down to the shop and do a knife review a from the sharpening bench video on a pretty cool knife. From our friends in Maniago, Italy, this one is a Viper Knives offering. It is the Kiyomi, designed by Jesper Voxness, the Vox logo on the right side of the blade. And if it sort of reminds you of another Viper Vox knife, well it should. It is a very close cousin, stable mate to the Odino uh, that came out about a year ago. The Kiyomi is sort of a, uh, a restyled, uh, similarly sized knife, but instead of being uh, deployed by thumb hole only, uh, this one adds the boon of a flipper, according to Blade HQ's brilliantly written copy on its listing. The boon of a flipper. Um, so let's kind of take a look at this guy. Uh, dimensions for you. The blade is listed at 3.1 inches. Um, pretty close. It's not an eighth of an inch long. It's probably 3 and 3 30 seconds long. Um, eh, we could cheat and say it's an eighth even though it's not. The handle is 4 and a quarter. So it's about 7 and 3 eighths inches, inches in overall length. Stock thickness of this beautifully machined and stonewashed Bowler N690CO blade steel is about 146 thousandths. Or for you metric system fans, that's three and three quarters millimeters. Handle thickness just a tick over half an inch, about 512 thousandths. Weight on this G10 show side scaled version. Also available in carbon fiber if you can find them. Four and a half ounces for the G10 model, about 4.3 for the CF scaled model. Uh, these are kind of hard to find in stock right now. Um, I think they'll be back though. Uh, the G10 version sold for about $170 at your favorite online cutlery purveyor. And the carbon fiber version, I think about $15 more. So a pretty nice value for a flipper knife on a caged ball bearing pivot with a titanium frame lock and a steel lock bar insert. And it's got all the good stuff. A CNC machine titanium pocket clip and a titanium backspacer that is shaped vaguely like a Chevy bow tie. We'll talk about that as we... Uh, get into the review. So let's talk about the blade as we always like to do. It is a nice broad steep drop point with a lot of belly and a very forward cutting edge on the upside of the belly. Um, it is flat ground from oh about 85 percent of its height coming to a nice thin dimension from that 146 thousandths of an inch stock. Look at that 16 degree micro bevel or secondary bevel. Not very broad, is it? That means we have a nice thin edge. And guys, if you've worked with that Bowler N690, you know, it's, you know, it's not very hard, not the best edge retention steel in the world, but it takes a keen edge and a very nice polish. Nice little S-curve for a big, fat, broad blade. Just beautiful steel to work with. Reminds me a lot of, of uh, VG10 uh, with a little bit, it's a little more roll resistant than VG10, but... Uh, easy to work with, takes a great edge. Let's look at the rest of the design of the blade. As you can see, it does have a forward finger choil in front of the flipper. 
And it serves not only as a great forward grip to get your thumb right over that cutting edge for powerful cutting, it also serves to clear a plunge grind and get a nice straight cutting edge all the way to the base. It's racking up points on the Apostle P scale, isn't it? You know, of course we have big deducts for the ball bearing pivot and the flipper, but you know, everybody's got to do that now. I kind of prefer this knife, you're not going to believe this, but even though it has a flipper, I kind of prefer it to the Odino. It just has more classic, organic shapes going on. I, I like this sort of steep drop in the spine. It, it's a variation from other, you know, Maniago lion steel blade shapes, although it does have that same distal taper as the SR lion steel. is going to be kind of hard to show you, but that, that grind is all vertical until you get to this last third of the blade. And then the distal taper starts about here and then runs to the tip. That's how we get this nice even thickness at, at the edge, hip, tip to hilt, which I really like as a sharpener and as a user. So let's talk about this lockup. It's very good. It's about, oh gosh, what do you think guys, 35, 40% maybe, um, and it is, you know, steel insert lock interface, and there's no lock rock or slip, and there's no lock stick, and I think if you're going to do this uh, sort of 3 o'clock lockup geometry, that steel insert's very important, because as you've heard me say before, most knives that are titanium on steel lock interfaces with this three o'clock geometry stick just seems to happen with shocking regularity. Um, I like the strength of the three o'clock geometry. Uh, somewhere I've got a video about that, but it makes the forces into the lock bar very straight back instead of tangential if you get a lock interface that's back here. It pushes directly back on the lock bar instead of trying to gall its way down. I like it, but it works better with steel, I have to say. And steel we have here. Machining on the titanium is very nice. The stone wash finish on the titanium matches well with the blade. Let's see about our ergonomics. In a saber grip in the rear choil, we have a really, really, really nice grip. It's a four finger knife, but the butt, uh, because of the shortish handle, buries sort of right where I like it into the, this pad of the outside of the hand. It's very secure and comfortable. In the hammer grip, very hand filling in all the right places. Really nice. In the draw cut grip, again, very nice. The flipper does not dig into the web of the hand. If we go saber grip in the choil, it's it's what you'd expect. It's really rock solid and comfortable. Uh, in that sort of vertical draw cut grip, not bad. And in the overhand pinch grip, it's a little odd with all this stuff going on down here, but it'll work. And for a little short stubby knife, I hesitate to show you this reverse tactical grip Ugh. but it's comfortable you could press it into service in a pinch do some piercing and slashing and whatnot but i think basically it's designed to be a really nice slicing but still chunky and substantial small modern edc folder and i think they got it um, while we're talking about ergos, I want to talk about this hole because it's uh, it's not really very helpful. You can do it left-handed because you're pushing away from the lock bar, but still it's very hard to get to and there's a lot of detent. I'm not sure you can even do it at all right-handed. So let's just call it a flipper with a ventilation hole because <laughs> that's really about all that hole is good for. Pocket clip is 
looks a little odd. And I know this is a you know perceived value added feature, but it's really, really, really stiff. I can barely lift it off there. And how does it insert in the pocket? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Uh, you can see there is very little room under the front of that clip and a very steep angle of attack. And once it's in, it's hard to get out. Frankly, the clip on the Odino, the stamped clip, spring clip, was better. Um, <laughs> I know it's value added to have a CNC machined billet titanium clip. But as I've said before, they rarely work as well as a spring clip. And this is no exception. It, uh, well, it definitely holds a knife in your pocket if you can actually get it in. It's two hands and a little bit of wrestling to get this knife in your pocket. Um, and I know that the finish of the clip matches the finish of the backspacer, but frankly, the clip should be stonewashed because it does not go. Does not go with the titanium frame at all. The backspacer is a little more inobtrusive. You, a little contrast from this view is nice, and when you're looking at it from the side, you just see the very edge of it. Um, that would be a nice accent. The clip, in my eye, not. One thing kind of cool about it, though, it is tip-up right or left-hand carry. Yeah, I guess for sub 200 bucks, I don't expect to see a filler tab, but that is one ugly-looking exposed hole. Um, it just sort of leaps off the handle and says, Something needs to be here! It sounds like I'm talking about an Italian knife, doesn't it? You know, they sort of have enough going for them sometimes to make you fall in love with them. And then you just scratch your head at a couple things. Um, <clears throat> especially when we're trying to sell knives and please masses. You know, you guys have heard me talk about this before. Go down this dark road. Um, you know, it has to have ball bearings. It has to have a flipper. And, you know... Ever since Jim Skelton started ragging on spring clips, if we can possibly fit it at a price point with a CNC machine titanium clip, you know, that's a custom touch, and guys will buy them, and guys do. Who cares if you can get it in your pocket? <laughs> okay, that's, that's enough negative. I want to talk about this rather ingenious backspacer. Yes, it does look like a Chevy bow tie. But it does a couple things really well. Um, let's look at how the, the back of the knife is constructed. Uh, you know, you hear me talk a lot on folders about orientation location of the two halves of the knife. So let's see what we got going on with this one. Well, we have a pivot, of course, that is a fairly precise fit. We have an open stop pin and a closed stop pin. I don't know how much structure they really give us because they're not restrained in any way. They're just uh, set into blind holes in both of the frame halves. And our fasteners in the back just screw into the back spacer. So where is our structure coming from in these directions? Well, right here. This big oval, the big... flattened ellipse locates into the G10 show side and to the titanium frame nicely and tightly. Sort of an idea this kind of stole from Spyderco. Those little lanyard tubes everybody takes out of their Spyderco knives. Um, no, you don't need that. It's just for a lanyard. No, it's not. It's a locating pin. Dummies. Especially on a military. So these screws can be just screws in this construction without locating the knife because we've got this big old locating lug 
in the form of the backspacer, keeping everything lined up where it should be. Very nicely done. And a lot cleaner than the Odino, by the way. And I think you can actually stick a lanyard through there, about any kind of lanyard you want. Like it. And the flipping action. Let's talk about the flipping action. It likes to be push buttoned really well. It's located just about perfectly just behind the axis of the pivot and there's enough detent that you can literally just push straight down on that flipper tab and out she flies. Is it a light switcher? Well, yes it is. See how it does lefty. With my formerly broken index finger, my light switch isn't the greatest with my left hand, but it's not the greatest flipper in the world, but it does take a little bit of muscle memory once you have that. Not a problem. Of course, blade play is nil. Let's see, do we have a nice free blade? Yes, we do. Not not so free with that lock bar tension that it wants to fall on itself. You have to give it a pretty good shake. Blade centering is excellent, but there is a little bit of an issue with the blade in the closed position. Can you see what it is? That tip is awfully close to breaking the plane of the frame. In fact, that's my finger catching the tip of the blade right there. I could make myself bleed for you, but I'm not going to. Um, and of course, that was the case before I sharpened the knife. As it's sharpened, that's going to get worse, not better. And that closed stop pin rides about right here on the forward shoil. So really to cure that problem, you'd have to get in and enlarge the forward shoil ever so carefully so as to bring the tip down in the frame without engaging the backspacer. It looks like there's quite a bit of room there, actually. If this were mine, I might attempt that at some point. It really doesn't bother me like it is. I mean, it's not really a hazard, I don't think. But this is not my knife, and I don't think it's really time to do that yet. This one belongs to one of my many customers named Chris. Somebody commented on a recent video, Oh, your customers are named Chris! Well, no, they're not, but I do have a few. Well, this one's on its way home to Texas tomorrow, but I thought you'd like to see it before it goes, because I think there are some things, if you like the Odino, but it had some details that just kind of were eh for you. Like for me, it's sort of blocky appearance, kind of angular shapes, um, and not so great deployment with its hole. Um, I actually prefer the flipper in this size Viper Vox knife and this more organic shape. Uh, I like it a lot, despite its flaws, or qualities that don't satisfy my preferences. That's all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and Chris's Kiyomi are sharp.